welcome to the viva boss of anatomy today we will see the hip bone part 2 in which first we will see the pubis bone the pubis bone is a thin bone of a hip bone that lies antero inferior part of the hip bone in front of the obturator foramen now first we will discuss the part of the pubis bone it is having one body and two ramus first we will see the body body is flattened and tero posteriorly it is having one uh, sharp border superior border which is known as a pubic crest pubic crest at the lateral end of a pubic crest there is a large elevation which is known as a pubic tubercle second thing and third it is having three surfaces that is anterior surface posterior or pubic surface and medial or symphysial surface the anterior surface is facing downward forward and slightly laterally the pelvic surface is facing upwards backward and slightly medially whereas symphysial or medial surface lies in the midline and it will unite with the same surface of a opposite wall to form a joint which is known as a pubic symphysis which is a secondary cartilaginous joint now we will see together the attachment of a body of a pubis first the pubic tubercle the pubic tubercle provides attachment of the medial end of a in inguinal ligament and it is being crossed by the uh, spermatic cord in mid second the pubic crest the pubic crest its medial part is crossed by the medial head of a rectus abdominis and the lateral part of a pubic crest give origin to the lateral head of a rectus abdominis and pyramidalis muscle now the attachment of an anterior surface anterior surface on medial side give attachment to one ligament that is anterior pubic ligament now the muscle in the angle between the pubic crest and the symphysial surface here it will give origin to the adductor longus muscle adductor longus muscle the second muscle along the margin of the symphysial surface and inferior ramus will give origin to the gracilis muscle medially this lateral to the gracilis it will provides origin to the adductor brevis muscle and third uh, a large along the margin of the obturator foramen this is body and here surface give origin to the obturator externus muscle so this is the attachment of anterior surface now on the posterior surface or a pelvic surface the posterior surface in the middle part it will give origin to the anterior fiber of a levator ani muscle medial to the levator ani it will provides attachment to the pubo prostatic ligament in case of mid and along the margin of the obturator foramen the pelvic surface give origin to the obturator internus muscle so this is all about the body of the pubis now we will see the ramus the pubis bone is having two ramus superior ramus and inferior ramus the superior ramus is passing superolaterally from the body of the pubis up to the acetabulum now the superior uh, ramus is having three border and three surface first we will see the border the first border is a superior border this superior border is also known as a pectineal line or pectin pubis it will extend from just behind the pubic tubercle to the posterior part of ilio pubic eminence this is pectineal line or superior border the second border of a superior ramus that is the anterior border the anterior border is also known as a obturator crest and it will extend from the pubic tubercle to the acetabulum the third last border the last border is a inferior border inferior border is a sar and it will form the anterior margin of a obturator forum now we will see the surface between these three border the first surface is a pectineal surface 
it is in the form of the triangular area that lies between the pectineal line and obturator base, extending from the pubic tubercle medially up to the iliopubic eminence laterally. The second surface is an obturator surface, this one that lies between the anterior border and inferior border. And this obturator surface will present one groove which is known as an obturator groove. And the last, the pelvic surface that lies between the superior border or pectineal line and inferior border. Now we will see the attachment of a superior ramus. This pectineal line towards the medial end here it will provide attachment of the conjoint tendon anteriorly and the lacunar ligament posteriorly. Now in its whole length this pectineal line gives attachment to the pectineal ligament of Cooper just lateral to the lacunar ligament. Then the whole line also gives origin to the pectineous muscle and the fascia covering the pectineus. Now, this pectineal surface. The pectineal surface in its upper part will give origin to the pectineus muscle. Now, this obturator groove. Obturator groove will lodge or passes the obturator nerve and obturator vessels. Now, the last surface that is the pelvic surface. The pelvic surface of a superior ramus, it is crossed by ductus deferens in case of male and the round ligament of a uterus in case of the female. Now we see the second ramus of a pubis bone that is the inferior ramus. The inferior ramus is passing inferolaterally and it will join with the ramus of the ischium to form conjoint ischium pubic rami. So we will discuss these two rami together as a conjoint ischium pubic, uh, ischium, ischium pubic rami. Now this conjoined ischial pubic rami is having two border that is upper border and lower border and having two surface the outer surface and inner surface. The upper border will form the lower margin of the obturator foramina and it will provide the attachment of the obturator membrane. The lower border along with the opposite lower border it will form the pubic arch and it will provide attachment to the fascia lata and the coolies fascia of a perineum. Now, the surfaces, it is having two surfaces, the outer surface which is rough and the inner surface which is convex and the smooth. The inner surface is divided into three area, upper, middle and lower by the two ridge, that is the upper ridge and the uh, lower ridge. Now we will see the attachment first on the outer surface. Now the outer surface along the margin of the obturator foramina it will give origin to the obturator externus. Next it will give origin to the gracilis and adductor brevis muscle chiefly from the pubic part. And last it will provide origin to the adductor magnus muscle chiefly from the ischial part. These are the attachment on the outer surface. Now on the inner surface. Inner surface is divided into three parts. Upper, middle and the lower. The upper part will give origin to the obturator internus. Middle part gives origin or attachment to the deep transverse perineal muscle. And the lower part will give origin to the superficial transverse perineal. Issue cavernosus and the attachment of a crust pelvis. So this is all about conjoint issue pubic rami and the pubis bone. Now the last part of the hip bone that is the ischium bone. Ischium is a thick massive bone which form the posterior inferior part of a hip bone behind the obturator foramina and below the acetabulum. Now the ischium bone is having two parts, the body of the ischium and the ramus. Ramus already we have described along with the conjoined ischium pubic ramus. So we will focus on the body of an ischium. Now this body is having two ends, three border and three surface. First we will see the two end. It is having the upper end which will fuse at the acetabulum 
with the ilium and the pubis bone and from the posterior inferior two fifth of a acetabulum. The lower end it will form the ischial fibrosity. Now talking about the borders, it is having three borders. The first is the anterior border that will form the posterior margin of the obturator foramen. The second, the posterior border. The posterior border of the ischium, body of the ischium is continuous above with the posterior border of the ischium. It will present the lower margin of the greater sciatic nodes, the ischial spine, the prominent uh, bony part, below the ischial spine, the lesser sciatic nodes. And the last border is a lateral border, this one. And the lateral border will form the lateral margin of a ischial uh, tuberosity. So these are three borders. Now talking about the three surfaces. The first surface is a femoral surface, this one, that lies between the anterior border and the lateral border, femoral surface. The second surface that lies between the anterior border and the posterior border inside that is known as a pelvic surface. And the third is a dorsal surface that lies between this lateral border and the posterior border, the dorsal surface. Now this dorsal surface will present the above downwards, the three structure in the most upper part, the convex area adjoining the acetabulum followed by the shallow groove followed by the upper part of an ischial tuberosity. Now we will see the parts of an ischial tuberosity at the last. The ischial tuberosity, it will form the lower end of the body of the ischium. Now ischial tuberosity, if you see, it is divided into, this whole ischial tuberosity, divided into two parts, upper part and the lower part by one transverse ridge. Now, this upper part is again divided by an oblique ridge into two area, superolateral area, inferomedial area. And this lower part is divided by a vertical ridge into outer area and inner area. So this is all about the body of an ischium. Now we will see its attachment. The first we will see the attachment of a posterior border. The first the ischial spine. Ischial spine along its pelvic surface, inner side, gives attachment to the posterior fiber of a levator and a muscle. Its posterior surface, ischial spine, is related to three structures. You can remember the mnemonic P. These are P for the pudendal nerve. I for the internal pudendal vessel and N for now to obturator internals which is related to the back of the ischial spine. Now the margin of the ischial spine will provide attachment to the uh, uh, sacrospinous ligament, sacrospinous ligament. Now the below the ischial spine there is a laser sciatic nodes. The laser sciatic node is lodged by the tendon of an obturator internus and its two margins, the superior and the inferior margin give origin to, to small muscle that is the superior gemellia and inferior gemellia respectively. Now we see the attachment of a surfaces. The first is femoral surface. The femoral surface along the margin of the obturator foramina gives origin to the obturator externus and literally quadratus femoris muscle. The pelvic surface inner side along the margin of the obturator foramina gives origin to the obturator internus muscle. And the last the dorsal surface. This dorsal surface this convex area is related from above downwards to the three structure. Piriformis, sciatic nerve and nerve to quadratus femoris. So these are the attachment of a surfaces of body of ischia. Now last and most important, the attachment of a ischial tuberosity. Now the ischial tuberosity, we have seen its division, it is divided into the upper and the lower part. Upper part will having the superolateral area, inferomedial area. Now this superolateral area gives origin to the semi-membranous muscle. 
and the inferomedial area you origin into the semi tendinosus muscle and the long head of biceps femoris muscle now the lower area the lower area is divided into lower outer and lower inner area lower outer area give origin to the adductor magnus muscle whereas the lower inner area is related to the fibro fatty tissue now attachment of the margin of a ischial tuberosity the medial margin will give attachment to the sacrotuberous ligament and the lateral margin gives attachment to the ischial femoral ligament so this is all about the ischium and in general the hip bone now next we will see the two structure of the hip bone one is the acetabulum the second is the obturator foramen for the acetabulum acetabulum is a cup shaped hemispheric cavity lies in the center of the hip bone where the three bone the ilium pubis and the ischium will fuse now the parts of the acetabulum the anteriorly posteriorly and the superiorly it will show the smooth surface smooth area which is articular it will articular with the head of the femur to form the hip joint now in the center there is a non articular area which is known as a acetabular fossa and it is filled with a uh, fatty tissue now inferior to the acetabulum you can see one notch is there which is known as a acetabular notch and this notch is breached by a transverse ligament as this margin of the acetabulum is Uh, providing the attachment of the fibrocartilaginous structure which is known as a acetabular bulbar uh, labrum which will deepen the acetabular cavity and stabilize the hip joint the second structure obturator foramen obturator foramen lies antero inferior to the acetabulum it is bounded anteriorly by the thin pubis and the posteriorly by the thick ischium obturator foramen is large and oval in case of male and it is small and triangular in case of female now this foramen is breached by a uh, obturator membrane except here at a obturator groove where the obturator nerves and the vessels will pass now at the last we will see the anatomical position of a hip how will you keep the uh, hip bone in the anatomical position so there are three points the first one the pubic symphysis and the anterior superior iliac spine should lies in the same coronal plane the second the pelvic surface of a body of the pubis bone is facing upwards and backwards and the last the symphysial surface of a body of the pubis lies in the middle line so you should keep the bone like this this is the anatomical position of a hip bone so this is all about the hip bone thank you if you like this video like it and share with your friends and to get the regular update on the anatomy videos please subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon